is remembered as PEB, S P E B. That's the antigen associated with PSGN, and uh, it's one of the examples for hypercellular glomerulus. Really, it is cellular. Cellular is due to proliferation of endothelial cells, proliferation of epithelial cells, infiltrating uh, WDCs, and where will you have the deposits in the PSGN? Anywhere in the kidney, preferably in the sub-epithelial location, because the sub-epithelial hump that refers to PSGN. When you find this term, you can be sure that you are dealing with a case of PSGN like that. Okay, and what will happen to complement levels? Transient hypocomplementemia. Good. And uh, hypertension. Sorry, will there be nephritis along with acute renal failure? Yes. In not in every case, especially in children, it has got a better prognosis. In adults, it has got a comparatively worse prognosis. So it may represent with nephritis and acute renal failure. And will there be hypertension proteinuria? Yes, that's an nephritic picture. There will be hematuria. There will be non-nephrotic range proteinuria. The edema in nephrotic syndrome is due to hypoalbuminemia, reduction on cortic pressure. Edema in nephritic syndrome is due to in edema in nephritic syndrome is due to oliguria. There is reduction in the urine output, resulting in expansion of the blood volume. Plasma volume resulting in edema development. So both will have nephrotic and nephritic will have edema, but the mechanisms are different. Both will have proteinuria, but the range will be different. So nephrotic syndrome is real nephrotic proteinuria. In nephritic syndrome, non-nephrotic proteinuria. And uh, uh, hypertension definitely will be there. And normal complement levels. So again, these are concrete things, so you can't have both. Okay, I think it's time sensitive. The answer will be Except all, except E, all the others are features of PHGM. Macrocytosis in CBC can be diagnosed by. So, this is a simple straightforward case. Macrocytosis is cells are larger than normal. So, with which parameter indicates the size of a cell? MCV. Mean corpuscular volume. Cells of the size of the cells are indicated by the MCV. The MCV will be higher in macrocytosis. The peripheral smear of heldrich spherocytosis show spherocytes. So, they say the heldrich spherocytosis will be spherocytes. They are asking about the characteristic feature of spherocytes. The spherocytes usually of same size, reticulocytosis seen, smaller size, anemia is negligible, Always associated with, I don't really understand this P and all. Always associated with PMCH, see that's all I can see. Okay, so usually, actually again this is, this is wrong. Answer given, the textbooks are also wrong. I don't know, I haven't gone through every MCQ textbook you come across. But I have seen the common pathology textbooks. Most of the textbooks are given, discuss it wrongly, at least in the last edition. I don't know, would have it in the last edition, in the recent edition. So, the so, tell me other conditions which will have spherocytosis. Heldrich spherocytosis is not the only condition or not even the most common condition associated with spherocytosis. Tell me other conditions associated with spherocytosis. All in kids, are you there? The most common condition causing spherocytosis is IHA. What is IHA? Autoimmune hemolytic anemia. That's the most common condition. Hereditary spherocytosis is like we hardly we come across some two to three patients per year. But we have we come across quite a lot of IHA in a year. Okay. And then apart from IHA, noted down the other conditions causing spherocytosis are burns, hemolytic disease of newborn, pyruvate kinase deficiency. G6 PD deficiency and malaria infection. So I repeat, the conditions causing spherocytosis are IHA, hemolytic disease of newborn, burns, and don't forget heritage spherocytosis. I just say, thinking that you will add it. Okay, heritage spherocytosis, pyruvate deficiency, G6 PD deficiency, malaria infestation. So all these are causes of spherocytosis. So this is not the only. So, and most importantly, when we come across a case of uh, spherocytosis, we have to rule out the possibility of IHA. How do you differentiate IHA and uh, 
and uh, hereditary spherocytosis without even having is that usually happens for V pathology, you know, like we only provide with the clinical history most often. So, how are we going to differentiate one point? Not, not helpful always, but mostly it helps the spherocyte size. Spherocytes will be of uniform size in HS, hereditary spherocytosis, of different sizes in IHA. That's one small clue for us. And uh, reticulocytosis is seen. Reticulocytosis will it be seen? Yes. It's a hemolytic anemia. Yeah, the spherocytes is not, not, there are not in every case of hemolytic anemia, reticulocytosis is there depending upon the phase. Okay. And will there be any phase in any hemolytic anemia where there will be reticulocytopenia? They have something called as aplastic crisis, which is common crisis in some of the hemolytic disorders like sickness and anemia and others. This is deficiency and So in that case, you know that uh, premature cells are destroyed, resulting in crisis. In that case, reticulocytopenia is a rule. So even in hemolytic anemias, we do find that uh, come across the phase of reticulocytopenia in such aplastic crisis. So that's the bottom line. And smaller in size, yes. In hereditary spherocytosis, what we come across are microspherocytes. Not just spherocytes, they are microspherocytes. Okay. And anemia is negligible? It may or may not be, depending upon the geno uh, genetic dosage. Always associated with increased MHC, yes. MCHC is elevated. So only one condition for you, PG aspirants, MCHC elevated is heterospherocytosis. So usually of same size should be also, should also be the answer. Are you given any printed, printout mark? No, right? Okay. So in that case, it's okay. If you are given any printers, you have to correct it. Okay. So usually of the same size, medical cytosis is seen. There are microspherocytes. And anemia may or may not be, so it is not a consistent finding. Okay. And always associated with increased MCHC. Anemia and chronic renal failure is due to, you want a lunch break? Break for lunch. So after some two patients, we'll break for lunch. Okay. okay, anemia and chronic renal failure is due to, so you know like, uh, Chronic renal failure patients becoming anemic is a very common finding. So there are multiple mechanisms operating on this to cause anemia. So one common mechanism is kidneys are the site of production of erythropoietin. This is a growth factor for red cell. That's the most common mechanism which is very well understood. Fine. And will there be any reduction in red cell survival? Will there be any premature destruction of red cells? Yes. There are many factors, mechanical factors and other things resulting in biochemical, mechanical factors resulting in reduced red cell survival. Will there be any folate deficiency? Yes. It's again a very common thing. That's why you know like the CRF patients on hemodialysis or not on hemodialysis will be given folate supplements to prevent anemia due to folate deficiency. Only that it can take can care of. Will there be bone marrow hypoplasia? Yes. And there is no erythropoietin. Bone marrow will be suppressed. Apart from the changes, even other cells will also be suppressed. So bone marrow will become hypoplastic by direct effects of chronic renal failure. Will there be iron deficiency? Yes, there are multiple mechanisms. Uh, one, there will be elevated levels of hepcidin, which will bring down the iron absorption. And then there will be micro bleeding because of platelet abnormalities. There can be bleeding, so which will again result in iron deficiency. And there can also be, yeah, when a hemodialysis, dialysis in membrane will remove iron. It will also be lost. So all these are, we have a lot more mechanisms to be added to this. So all these are mechanisms of iron deficiency. The answer is all. So everything is a cause for anemia in chronic inner failure.